Normally, when I upload Alliance War videos, I get to give you guys the play-by-play -play breakdown on exactly what went down for each war. I could share with you guys my thought process for why I'm bringing in certain champions against certain nodes and how it all interacts with my mastery build. I can tell you guys all the things that went right throughout the fight and all the things that went wrong and how I'm going to be learning from it going forward. And hopefully you guys could learn from my mistakes as well. And then I generally kind of just get my ass kicked for your guys' entertainment. And I've had a lot of fun making these Alliance War videos in the past. I've recorded every single Alliance War for months now. But I have to say that this will be the last Alliance War that you see out of me. Because in the current state of the game, it's just not fun. And I, I can't make videos about things that I'm not having fun doing. Um, and I'm, I just feel completely numb to the entire system of Alliance Wars. I mean, I'm still going to be playing them, right? I mean, it's, you know, it's, 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 like a, it's like a secondary login calendar at this point. Log in, participate in war, collect some free rewards. But it's, it's not fun enough to, uh, to talk about and make videos about and everything. Uh, and I did already share my concerns and issues that I have with the system in, in a previous video, but this is such a big part of the game that it's worth making a follow-up video expressing some of the things that, uh, that I failed to mention in that first go-around. So the first thing that I want to mention is that it still very much so feels like it's Kabam and the player base. And I want it to be Kabam and the player base. This would have been the perfect opportunity to have a large-scale open beta of sorts, right? Not on like a beta server or anything like that, just on the live servers. But all it would have taken was Kabam to say up front, hey, we have some really big changes coming to Alliance War. We think they're good, but they're they're really big, and you know we want your guys' feedback on it. Some of you might not be, uh, you know, you might not enjoy the system. We want to hear feedback as to why and what things can be done differently. And for the next few weeks, as things are being tweaked and finalized, also just mail out some, uh, you know, some potions and revives, just saying like, hey, Alliance Wars, they're they're going to be undergoing some changes, and you know, to kind of aid you in getting through this whole changing process, we're going to give you some free items to get through it, uh, and also as a way of saying thanks for giving feedback and stuff like that. Still reward us for, for winning and losing and, and give us all those rewards and everything like that, but maybe don't make any kind of rating changes that we can see on the surface at least um, to kind of preserve the hard work that players have, have put into the system. And then maybe after, you know, after a couple of weeks, after a month, uh, you know, start a new season of Alliance War with all of these changes into the system. Um, and I feel like that would have, this, this, again, this would have been the perfect opportunity for that. Um, there are players out there who still have a very bad taste in their mouth from everything that happened with 12.0, and I feel like this, this would have been the perfect opportunity to, to kind of fix all of that. And to Kabam's credit, I feel like they have done a better job since 12.0. Um, they've hired additional people for the forums. Who knows if they have hired additional, you know, people behind the scenes that we can't see, that we don't interact with the people that are actually uh, developing the game and stuff like that, I don't know. Um, there's been a, a beta program that was that was started, there's uh, been a content creators program that was started. So yeah, Kabam is getting better at all this stuff, but still, they, 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 they missed an opportunity this time around. And I, I mean, I do think that Kabam is listening to our feedback. All of the games that are that are live games like this that are un undergoing constant changes, they're always listening to our feedback, right? It should be something that uh, you know goes without saying. But sometimes we still need to hear it, man. Sometimes we still need to kind of have that upfront of just, hey, things are going to be wildly different, um, but we want to work with you guys in this case. We don't want it to be like in the past. Uh, and, and yeah, I, I feel like uh, I kind of dropped the ball in, in this go around. The next issue I want to talk about is just that Alliance War feels too much like Alliance Quest. They have different names. They should be different experiences, right? Uh, and I talked about this in my previous video, but it goes even beyond the things that I was saying there. Um, let's just start with the scoring system. So the way it works right now is whoever has the most diverse roster with the highest ratings automatically wins. That sounds an awful lot like Prestige, except it's a lot worse in this system. Um, because yeah, there's only there's only two people, right? There's a winner and a loser. It's not like it's not like a like a tiered system where you're kind of ranking and, and seeing where you land against other alliances. There's no way to have uh, the option of doing something that uh, is more costly, like map six, to kind of gain those spots. It's just straight up, who has the highest ratings, you automatically win. Because at the moment, at least in the higher tiers, every alliance is 100% clearing. And it has nothing to do with money, as some people are, are still kind of saying, like, whoever has the most money wins. No. Top alliances, they're not spending a dime on current alliance war. Uh, it's, it's so easy. Every alliance is 100% clearing without using any items, even. So, um, yeah, it's, it is just a straight... Who, who can, who can uh, get the highest rated champions into that war system? 
Congratulations, you've won. A system has to exist that measures the skill of each alliance and compares the two. And previously we had this with defender kills counting towards the point totals. And maybe this wasn't the absolute best measure of skill. Maybe there could be something better that measures skill, right? But honestly, it's pretty damn good. Um, not only was it very simple to understand, right? I mean, day one, your very first alliance war, somebody could tell you, okay, if you die in this fight, you're going to be giving up points to the other team. And likewise, if your defenders get kills, you're going to be getting points as well. And somebody will understand that, especially in the context of, of war, right? Of a PvP situation here. Um, people will understand that. So very simple, easy to understand. Um, but it, not only that, not only did it uh, was it easy to understand, not only did it help decide uh, the outcomes of wars, it also gave meaning to each individual fight. It gave a lot more meaning to the decisions that you're making, the champions that you're bringing in. Um, it gave more meaning towards going like your, your collection, right? You want to be improving your roster. You want to be getting these five-star champions. You want to be getting these new champions that you can see have some kind of a, a fit in Alliance War that's going to help you to not die and everything like that. Um, it, it even, it, it even uh, you know, outside of the fight, measured your skill in the terms of um, kind of your, your item management uh, and, and how you're going to be using these items to get through. Are you going to risk it? Are you going to risk it by entering the fight with half HP? Uh, I mean, you have a little bit of extra damage from the Courage Mastery. You might be able to get through it. You might be able to save units so that uh, the next time, the next fight, you, the next war, you'll be able to use those units there. Or do you want to heal up first? Do you want to heal up to full? Do you want to use those potions, those very costly potions, to potentially not give up any kind of... Uh, you know, any, any kind of points to, for the opposing alliance. So yeah, it, it, it did measure skill in that way as well. Uh, just in the whole, like, item management uh, aspect of the game, right? Because it is more than just a fighting game. It does go beyond just the head-to-head -head fight. Let's talk more about the nodes on the map, and even the map itself, as I take the next couple of these fights fully noted up here, just out of pure boredom. Um, there's multiple issues with, with the, the nodes on the map. Uh, first off, I want to say that I think it's really good that Kabam removed some of the ridiculous nodes. Uh, but one of the issues is that they didn't really replace them with anything new. They brought in Limber, which I think is really, really good. I cannot stress that enough. I think that Limber um, can really show off uh, your skill because you, you have to kind of pick and choose which parries you're going to use and stuff like that. Uh, and especially if somebody else has the Limber Mastery, it can make it very difficult. Um, so that was a good addition, but there needs to be more. There needs to be more things that make these fights interesting, aside from just jacking up their HP and their health. Uh, I really hated that about other games, particularly Diablo 3. I thought that was the, the worst offender of, uh, of this kind of just, just this power creep of increasing... Uh, the, the HP and, and, and damage output and stuff like that, right? Like, that stuff needs to increase, of course, as well. But there needs to be more interesting stuff going on. So bring in some of those more interesting nodes out of the story quest or come up with something new. I don't really care. As long as it's interesting, as long as it's fun, um, as long as it can show off your, your, your kind of skill uh, and, be, and, be, and provide some kind of challenge to get through, then awesome, right? That stuff needs to be brought in. Um, some of these nodes here are still pretty challenging, but it's, it's being hidden by the fact that uh, there is this, this kind of forced diversity that is bringing in uh, these weaker champions that it just doesn't matter. Like, this node in particular that I'm fighting, it should be very difficult. There's a, a lot of stats that this Spider-Man has. He's immune to stun. Um, it, this should be a pretty difficult fight. He has some kind of evasion, even if it isn't the craziest of, of the evasions. Uh, but the bottom line is, it's, it's not difficult because Spider-Man is just not a good defender. Um, so yeah, the, the, the force diversity is kind of hiding the fact that some of these nodes are still very, chal very challenging. Um, another thing that's hiding the fact of, of the challenge is that we can see all of the different class types, even at the highest tiers, which, uh, you know, that, that's always existed in some of the tiers, but at the highest tiers, it, it should not exist. Um, and I was kind of thinking like, ah, oh, maybe this could actually lead to more more skill, maybe this is a good change because maybe looking at your path you can bring in different champions to attack with. Uh, I think that's kind of cool that it's it's giving you that option, but actually it's I don't think it's very good uh, after after playing around with it. Um, not only do I think it, you know, again it does take away some of this challenge, but it also takes away uh, from the class detection masteries. And although I didn't run any of those myself, I know other players felt very good about running those masteries. They felt like it provided them some kind of an edge, uh, and there was a little bit of a trade-off. They were they were giving up, um, you know, some of the power that they could have with other masteries to get this 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 intel about upcoming fights. So I feel like the the class types they they should be hidden. 
Um, maybe not always. It's kind of cool that we can, you know, we can see them a little bit. I always liked the fact that we can see what the boss is going into the, the war. Um, you know, I don't know if it's necessarily good for, for the, uh, uh, the, the mini bosses leading up to the final boss. Maybe it's good there. Maybe it's not. I don't know. Um, but yeah, for the most part, I think that the class, uh, the classes, they need to be turned off. It needs to be something that we don't know about going, going into it ahead of time. As for the map itself, I'm really not a fan of it. Um, when they first said that portals were coming to Alliance Wars, I was like, ah, oh, really, portals? They're not really fun. Um, but then they explained why and how you can kind of, you know, get towards the end of your path, and then if you're still in a healthy fighting shape and maybe someone else needs help, you can kind of take a portal and help them out and everything. I was like, wow, that actually, that actually sounds really cool. That actually sounds like a very interesting use of portals for a change. Um, whereas the last time I liked portals was pretty much um, dimensional rifts. <laughs> and outside of that, I'm not a huge fan of portals, and I don't think many people are. Um, but the way that it's set up in, in this current war, I still don't think it's very good. Uh, what I would like to see is, is go back to the original map, go back to the original map, have something just kind of very simple like that, uh, and, then, and then tweak it a little bit. Add portals along like the outer edges, so that, um, you know, taking those paths, you, you can um, help out and you can jump to different areas of the map and, and help out in that kind of a way. Um, make it so that the portals um, do not count towards the exploration, right? So you're not, you don't, you're not forced to do something like that if your path is going well. But you have that option where you can kind of hop around. Maybe you get through the right side of, of, of the map, but you're better versus like the left mini boss. So you can do something like that. I think that'd be a pretty interesting change. Another issue that I have with the map is there's nothing in place to keep it from getting stale again. I mean, you know, Kabam tried with uh, with adding this diversity, this, this kind of uh, forcing diversity as, as part of uh, one, one of the main parts of Alliance War. And that alone I thought was going to keep things interesting enough. But I, 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 after playing around with it a little bit, I don't think that's the case. Um, I think what really needs to happen is there needs to be some kind of rotation of nodes in the map. Uh, my last video I said that it'd be kind of cool to have multiple different maps to keep things interesting and exciting, but I don't even think that's a good idea. I think keep the map the same, I think keep it to one map, go back to something similar to what we had in the last season, add the, add the, uh, the teleporters on the outside to, to add that additional strategy, but not, not forcing it. And the final very important step to keep wars from growing stale would be to have this rotation of nodes. Um, so for example, uh, you know, if you take path one, maybe path one, node three, it's going to be unblockable special one. Uh, but then the next war you do, path one, node three is going to be unblockable special two. The next war, that same node could have uh, all or nothing on it. This, the next time it could be severe power gain or, or stun immunity or something like that, right? Um, so that each time you go through war, even though you're taking the same path, you're going to have a little bit of a different experience. Most of the nodes are going to stay the same, right? So that there's still some of this familiarity to it and you still know which champions that you're going to be trying to get for the most part. You're still like working on this, this main attack team that you have. Um, but then there's going to be this, this rotation uh, on, uh, on some of the nodes that you're going to bring in like a specific champion to counter or something like that. I think that would go a long way in keeping Alliance Wars fresh for a long time. And the last thing that I want to talk about goes back to diversity. Um, I was all for there being more diversity in Alliance War. It sounds amazing. In, in theory, it sounds awesome. You're going to be fighting different champions all the time. It's not going to be this boring experience. But in practice, I think it fails. And I, I, I'm not sure if this was an attempt to kind of uh, nerf the Mystic class without changing uh, Mystic Dispersion. Um, because a lot of people uh, are really against nerfing anything in this game, even if it is out of line. Um, but I, I actually don't like the idea of having a diversity system at all. And I, I've, 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 it's, it's been like full spectrum here. At first, I was like, um, very much so for this, this diversity rating thing. It's like, awesome, yes, force some diversity in there. Then being like, ah, maybe it's, maybe it's good if, it, if there's diversity, but there's also that threat of like, if you bring a crappy champion, you're gonna, you're gonna give the other team points or something like that. Um, you know, so you have that option of, of bringing in a strong defender or bringing in a, a champion that's going to give diversity points. Um, and I thought that was good, but ultimately, I think I, I'm, I'm fully shifted now to just saying, get rid of diversity rating. I actually, I actually don't think it's a good idea um, at all. Like I said, initially, I thought it was amazing, 
but uh, after spending some time with experiencing it and uh, thinking about it further, I, I actually don't think it's a good idea. And instead, what I think should happen is just remove the buff from Dexterity. Leave Mystic Dispersion alone, but remove the buff from Dexterity. Um, I, I, I think that's it. I, so I think a combination of everything I mentioned here with uh, all, of the dif all of the different nodes, changing the map, um, bringing back the points for getting defender kills, all that stuff, uh, it, it kind of all needs to happen. Um, but at the same time, I, I also want to see diversity rating go away, and I just want to see that change happen to uh, removing the dexterity buff from dexterity, right? Just make it straight dexterity. That's it. Um, so kind of an indirect nerf to Mystic Dispersion. Uh, anyway, that is going to do it for this video. Uh, there's probably other things that uh, will come to mind and that I'll continue to discuss on live streams, but uh, for now I think that's going to do it for, for my talks about Alliance War until we see some other uh, updates from Kabam. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.